this is the cringiest isekai anime and you can see it's shadow about to do i'm atomic kito senpai has made a four minute video saying this shit is cringe let's see what he has to say this is the cringiest isekai anime this season but yeah. not in a bad way in a good way to the comedic factor of the story making it a really entertaining parody glazing it up bro i thought he might be hating on it i want some negative opinions in the eminence and shadow and we're gonna watch another video later specifically about this guy but man he just baited us he's just glazing it up like me now the isekai anime the eminem and shadow <laughs> one more time <laughs> one more time isekai anime the eminem <laughs> hand sweaty <laughs> knees weak eminem and shadow Wh whoops mistake the Eminence and mm, Shadow. Uh -huh, Unfortunately, uh -huh. it's not getting as much recognition due to the obviously big names this season. When it first showed up, Eminence and Shadow actually did get overlooked. This is last year, right? There were some huge titles. Blue Lock, Chainsaw Man, My Hero Academia. This is like sixth season. This is like one of the most hype arcs too, right? Mob Psycho final season. Spike's Family. Fucking Bleach, right? These are gigantic titles. I don't think many people were looking or even understood that Eminence and Shadow was there. This was actually lurking in the shadows. Like, straight up. Straight up. People didn't realize how OP Eminence and Shadow would be. Season. Chainsaw Man, Bleach, you mm. name it. I keep telling myself I'm done with watching this isekai genre of anime, but every day I'm not. Time, there's always something new that these anime studios just whip up yeah. from the longest and most random life. That's right. You're bored of Isekai? Nah, here, here it is. How about reincarnated as a vending machine? No? How about reincarnated as a fucking pig? That's airing right now, by the way. Normal titles. Like reborn as a vending machine. There it is. What I say. What I say, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, even before this, last year there was reincarnated as a sword. You see that one anime? It's about a cat girl that wields a sword, and the sword is the Isekai protagonist. I thought that she was bizarre, but it was actually pretty decent. But then they came out with reincarnate as a fucking vending machine. And this anime, it was actually good. It was actually solid. Nice slice of life, chill, funny isekai. Machine. Reincarnated as a hot spring. One more time. Incarnated as a hot spring. If you look at the engagement here, this is the most replayed section. Oh. You're a hot spring. Like, you are bath water. You know what would be hilarious? If the hot spring is expecting waifus, but it's just a bunch of fat, hairy old men that gets in the hot spring instead. <laughs> Yo, when is this anime dropping? Reincarnated as a succubus. Nah, nah, this is pretty normal. Unless this is a guy that got reincarnated as a succubus. Then that's like... Hey, yo, but incubuses exist. Reincarnated as a... This one was good. This one is actually, unironically, pretty decent. Sword, which is also another isekai anime this season. And I always end up watching or reading said isekai content. Diagnose me with compulsive isekai disorder because your boy needs some therapy. The best way I can describe the eminence in Shadow is that it's a more serious version of Konosuba. Which a serious version of Konosuba. Again, this is the way that I would describe eminence in Shadow. It's pretty much just like... Isekai One Punch Man, right? Because the thing about One Punch Man or, or Eminence in Shadow is that you have a ridiculous OP main character, but they cannot always be there to save the day. So the story is more focused around everything else but the main character. You get immersed into those side characters, and you even feel the threat of these soon-to-be jobber you know, enemies, right? These opponents who seem so powerful against the current side characters. And then who shows up? It's going to be Saitama, or it's going to be you know, Shadow for this instance. Which is another parody isekai. It follows the story of Minoru Kagano, who's pretty much a teenage Batman. I'm yeah! Batman. He takes an intense yeah. amount of training, learning new skills, fighting styles to become as strong as possible. All of this while trying to blend in with the average folks during the day as a school kid, in which he will gladly do anything to make everyone around him, even his parents, happy and convince them. Do we ever see his parents? And this girl? Are we ever gonna see this girl again? Don't spoil me! Don't spoil me, but... Remember this girl? I thought she was gonna be the main waifu of the series. Turns out, nah, nah, episode one and done. He's just your average bloke. But um, if you look at her eyes here, black hair, red eye, Claire. Bloke. But at night, he takes on gangs and bad guys and more bad guys with a crowbar. Yeah. That is until my man, like all other isekai protagonists, gets slammed by truck coon. But this is different because he fucking smashed his head against the boulder to hype himself up. Then he ran out into traffic to get hit by this so that he could go into the world of magic, right? And then, yeah, that's it. Roll credits. Or that's what the show...
one of the craziest fucking just like fake outs. What a hook of an episode. When the credits started rolling, I was like, no. What do you fucking mean? No. It's not actually over, right? Actually, hold up, hold up, hold up. Right now, I'm, I'm gonna show you this what I'm talking about right now. In my channel, if you've seen Eminence in Shadow, right? Eminence in Shadow. I have a whole playlist. The first episode ever is called I Got Baited So Hard. Watch this shit. Watch this shit. You think my plot? Uh-huh. But, 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 this is our world still. Wait. Wait. Credit? Ah. No, what do you, no, 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 what do you mean? That shit got me fucking so hyped, dude. The first episode was so fucking good. Roll credits. Or that's what the show wants you to think. What happens after that? Well, as a fellow isekai enthusiast, I think it's pretty obvious. Minoru Kagano gets reborn in a different- Baldi! Bald! Bald! ...magical world as Sid Kagano. But what makes this isekai anime special is the fact that it plays extremely well on the Chunibyo trope and the mm. own character's imagination. Quite That's right. literally, if you don't know what Chunibyo is, it's the Japanese... Edgy teenagers. Japanese term for 8th grade syndrome. Specifically 8th grade, I guess that's when like high school starts, right? Or like, I guess middle school here term for 8th grade syndrome. It's basically teenagers that have these delusions about having a grand purpose in life and secret yeah. powers and abilities to make them stand out from others. And I think everybody felt to a certain degree like that, right? And Sid's mom is indeed fine, but this is another anime that I think I want to watch, but again, it's got to win in the polls. And well, Sid Kagino uses that trope accidentally to his advantage because the whole universe that he gets isekai to somehow makes his chunibyo and accidents into a reality. Yep, memes into reality. Yep. <laughs> He knows he's bullshitting, but that bullshitting drives the narrative into reality. <laughs> he knows he's bullshitting, but that bullshitting drives the narrative into True. reality. Making yeah. him seem like he knows it all behind the scenes, even though at times he just pulls random facts out of thin air. Like the cursed magical blob he rescued and cured who happened to be an elf girl. He makes up an entire... Okay, so one thing I actually don't understand is like, you know how like Shadow can like heal the possessed people and that's how all these girls are saved. But, and he did mention in the most recent, like the one of the most recent Eminence and Shadow episodes where he healed everyone else after, um, you know, Elizabeth was injecting her, you know, her progenitor vampire genes into everybody, you know, shooting the blood. And everyone's like starting to get more, more uh, with those blobs showing up. And he, he says it's quite easy to heal them, but when he heals them, does he know what he's doing? That he's like saving these girls from possessed blood? Like, does he know? Acts out of thin air. Like the cursed magical blob he Yeah, like right here. Cured, who he just happened to save Alpha, but did he know what he was saving Alpha from? Who happened to be an elf girl. He makes up an entire origin story on the spot by referencing a fairy tale and- I guess he wouldn't know because he just made this shit up about the cult of Diablos. And the cult of Diablos were experimenting on these girls with the possessed blood, so I guess he doesn't really know then, huh? Text print. He knows the magic mechan mechanism, right? He can understand that there's magic overload, exactly, Yolo Master, right? He knows that there's ma 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 mana is like overflowing from them, but maybe he doesn't really understand the context of who was doing this shit. Printed on a whiskey bottle that just happened to be there to make him appear as if he's this secret person working from the shadows trying to stop a group of zealots known as the Cult of Diablos, who also, according to his story, happened to be the enemy group that cursed her into that blob in the first place. Yep. And when she heard this, she swears his loyalty to him, and thus the organization by the name of Shadow Garden was born. Shadow Garden. But here's the twist. All of this ends up being true. All yep. the blunders and mistakes in Chunibyo-style cruel moments end up and it just keeps building up and building up and all these misunderstandings just turns into this grandiose like we have a secret organization we're fucking taking down like enemy organizations right now we're competing with like the mca different like corporate like elites it's fucking crazy i don't think shadow has a single idea of what's actually going on being true even the entirely fake origin story he made up on the spot all true and this is where i really got invested into the story aside from all the english of course this this is where i got invested into the story bro the i'm atomic the absolute power difference again episode five season one Fucking ridiculous. I am Atomy. Oh! oh yeah, and literally Moonlight Sonata being played in the background. That's right, this show is so fucking edgy. This show is so chuny. If you look at the soundtrack of this, it's gonna be that Kenichiro guy, Suohiro, I think, is one of the main composers. And then the other composer, Ludwig van Beethoven. That's right. Ludwig van Beethoven is also making the soundtracks for Eminence and Shaka. That's how edgy this show is.
Honestly, a lot of the parts for this anime do end up really cool, especially the fight scenes. But once again, remembering that this was all once just made up makes it just as cringe in a funny way. It's like it's telling you to be serious one moment and then it's telling you not to be serious in the next moment. I love it. These elements of the story really makes this anime yes. an awkwardly fun parody. And the most important thing here, I think, is about the serious part, right? Because the show can get serious when things need to happen. When 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 like Shadow shows up to save the day, things are very serious. But here's the common problem that I think happens in a lot of shows that takes themselves too seriously. If a show doesn't have these comedic elements, if a show doesn't have these elements to make it less serious at times, if a show is always serious, then it's never serious, you know? Sometimes it becomes like almost cringe because it's too serious. And it's like, it's like you, you can't take a show too seriously if it's always just fucking always super dramatic. But the thing about Emmons and Shadow and One Punch Man and other shows that focus more on the comedy aspect, even Konosuba, for example, right? There's a lot of comedy elements that really makes you just laugh. But the stark difference in the contrast between that and the epic moments the show can deliver that contrast between what the show usually is compared to what the show can be with these epic moments makes it go even further beyond. Even if the moment, let's say, in these less serious shows are not as epic as, let's say, like a serious show doing an epic moment, the contrast again, the difference between what you're expecting makes it so much better in my opinion. So I think shows that's more in doubt in, in than, let's say, comedy and stuff like that, I think performs better when you want to get really hype. Isekai that keeps on entertaining and obviously feeding my isekai addiction and the ways he just keeps trying to oversell the fact that he's a background character gives me a good chuckle here and there. I'll leave it at that to not ruin the story, but hey, there's a lot of big animes. He just said he didn't want to ruin- okay, he said ruin the story. But <laughs> imagine showing fucking I am Atomic Kieran and saying, I don't want to spoil you guys, but I'm, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. He's saying, you know, but the plot, that, like, that, that I am Atomic is out of context. You wouldn't really know what's happening, but come on, man. It's a season, but if you do have a slot and you're looking for an entertaining isekai yes. anime or just yes. anime in general, this is it. Yeah, that's about it. Like and subscribe. Goodbye. Great video. This is one of my first videos from Kito Senpai. Great video. Go like the video. Subscribe to his channel if you'd like to, right? I think we're going to watch more of his videos. But again, I, I, I don't have to tell you guys to watch Eminence and Shadow. You already are watching Eminence and Shadow. That's why you're watching this video. But these reactions, they happen live on stream 7 a.m. PST, YouTube. So hope to see you guys there sometimes. Goodbye.